somewhere in this large area are the remains of a medieval village. But where has it gone? Now what if I were to tell you that there is a lost village to the east of Nairn? Not only that, but its existence has been totally forgotten. Well today, we're going to see if we can find any evidence of this lost village. So come with me for a wee dunder round and we'll just see what we can find out. Now then, on Tuesday the 1st of September 1959, the burials of five adults and a child were found during the digging of a pole hole by the North of Scotland Hydroelectric Board. The lads had stumbled across the remains of the ancient village of Loch Loy. And this village, along with the adjoining fishing settlement of Maveston, had disappeared from history many years before. Now situated just behind me is the very pole the hydroelectric lads were putting in when they came across these skeletons back in the 60s. Now the burials remained were examined by a Mr P Ritchie of the Ministry of Public Buildings and Works and he did this on the 8th of February 1967. He had a good look round and he found a possible hut circle, midden material and a small fragment of wall, but no date could be ascertained to any of these finds. The first mention I can find of Loch Loy was in connection with the landing of Harold, Earl of Caithness, at the port of Loch Loy to make submission to King William the Lion at the Castle of Nairn sometime after 1186. The village of Loch Loy, which was still in existence in the early 17th century, lay between the loch and the modern house of Loch Loy, close to the present day road. The village of Loch Loy features prominently on old maps of Scotland. It was important enough to appear on various maps from the 16th century onwards, and it's interesting to note that it is still shown on the 19th century map, which also includes the new railway. The present day Loch Loy and Cranloch are just remnants of an arm of the sea which used to intrude here, but which has over time been cut off by sand dunes. And indeed, as early as 1196, we find records that there was even a harbour here called the Port of Loch Loy. And this allowed seagoing ships to beach themselves on the sands and unload cargo. Hearthstones, querns and the remains of buildings were dug up here in about 1859. There is an excellent history of nature published in 1893 by George Bain. And although it's a bit dry in places, it contains a wealth of information about Nairnshire. Bain recorded that there was a chapel on a mound a little to the west of the village and that dry stone foundation walls were still evident and hinted at a very old building indeed. And here in front of us is one of these dressed stones that I was talking about. So it's tantalising and exciting that this may be evidence of the chapel that once existed here. It apparently bore marks of such extreme primitiveness that it may possibly be an early Columban chapel. The mound on which it was built had on it a number of undressed and unmarked headstones. Bain adds that fragments of human bones were dug up when a road was being made down to the loch, but that that work was stopped by the proprietor 
and we don't really know anything else about that find. I've had a look on the mound and there's nothing really on the surface to see. I have spotted one or two dressed stones that may hint at an old, old building, perhaps even this chapel. However, according to the Ordnance Survey maps, I think the chapel well may still exist. So let's go and we'll try and find it. And this for me is the most exciting part of the history, where you can actually go and explore and perhaps find something from the ancient times. Sometimes it's necessary to batter your way through vegetation, trees, all sorts of obstacles. But it's going to be worth it because I feel we might actually find this well. Again in front of us here's one of these excellent obstacles that we're going to have to get over one way or another. Let's try. Whoops! Big leap and uh, managed to get over. Now I've been battering through this bit of woodland for a while now and uh, I think I'm getting close so I'm just going to batter uphill just in front of me and I think we may be on to the well. Now I'm seeing something in front of me now and this is getting exciting. The ground underfoot is extremely boggy but uh, I think we may have got there. Now this is, this is good. Here's an ancient water trough. So the farmer at one time has utilised this well for the water. Let's see if we can find the actual source, the place where it comes out the ground. And here we are at the site of the chapel well. There's a good flow of water coming straight out the ground here. And not only that, I've spotted one or two dressed sandstone blocks round about. This says to me that this well has been used. It's been looked after and it's been venerated throughout centuries in the past. And I like to think of the monks that used to come here to fetch their water in the ancient times and got sustenance here and perhaps it also had a holy significance. It is after all thought to be originally a Columban church a Columban chapel, and to the Columban people, wells that sprang forth had meaning and great power. The only other reference to the village of Loch Loy that I could find comes from a very unlikely source. In 17th century Scotland, a lot of society's problems were put down to witchcraft. And the unfortunate women, and occasionally men, who were accused of using witchcraft, were hunted down and punished mercilessly. Now one of the most famous of them was a lady called Isabel Gowdy. Now Isabel and her husband lived, according to the records, in Loch Loy. And Loch Loy is only really two miles north of the village of Aldern. And the connection with Aldern is Isabel's trial was held in Aldern. Her detailed confessions while on trial in 1662 remain the subject of scholarly fascination to this day. Her full story is worth telling and is quite a long story and it may be the subject of another video in the future. But the main thing about Isabel Gowdy, and she's one of the most famous witch trial victims in Scotland, is the detail with which the trial was recorded. But for the purposes of this story, the interesting fact that she lived in Loch Loy village, and that her confessions and trial were held in Noldern. And although there is no record of her eventual fate, it must be presumed that she suffered the same terrible punishment handed out to all persons found guilty of witchcraft at that time. I'm here at Gallows Hill outside Aldern and it was here on Gallows Hill we must presume that Isabel Gowdy met her terrible fate. 
poor Isabel. Her only crime was living in the times that she lived. And her fate, she would have been strangled and burned.